Ready for vectors, Victor? Yes. Then let's go. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 11, lesson number one. Looking at the equation of a line in what is known as symmetric form. So, the equation of a line. Well, we know in 2D to get the equation of a line. Liam, what do we need? Good, we need to know a point on the line. And we also need to know the gradient of the line. Well done, Liam. If we mix that up, and we change that to 3D, what do we need to get the equation of a line in 3D? Well, we still need to know a random point on the line. But instead of the gradient, we need to know a vector that is in the direction of the line. So let's consider this amazing little diagram here. We've got this line, line L, with the points A and P. And we've also got this vector U. So consider line L, which passes through point A with the coordinates x1, y1, z1, and it's parallel to vector U. And vector U can be written as ai plus bj plus ck. Vector U is known as, well, because they are parallel, they are heading in the same direction, so it's known as the direction vector for the line L. And we've also got that point P, and P is just going to be a random point on the line with coordinates x, y, z. The vector AP, well, it's parallel to vector U. And because it's parallel to vector U, well, we know then that the length of this line, this vector U, well, if we move that so it's over here, well, we can see then, well, looking at the diagram, we can maybe fit a couple of them in. Don't go by that scale, though. All we know is that vector u, if you multiply that by something, you will really get this length from a to p. So we can say then that ap is going to be something times vector u for some non-zero scalar t. Again, it's just really how many of these will fit into this distance between A and P. You might fit 2 in, 3 in, 4 in, 17 and a half in. We don't know. We just know that AP is going to be something times vector U. If we write this in component form, well, how would we find the vector AP? Well, for that, we would have to subtract. We do P minus A. So we'd have this X take away X1. So doing that over the page, we'd have X take away X1 y take away y1, and z take away z1. And that would be us finding the vector a, p. We know that is going to be equal to t times a vector u. So t is just going to be some scalar. And u, if we think about u in component form, well, we'd have a, b, and c. So that's going to be equal to t times a, b, c. And if we multiply the brackets here, it's going to be t, a, t, B and T, C. We can then equate the components. Yes, we can. So we can say that X take away X1 will equal, well, it's equal to T times A. And if we divide both sides by A, then we can say that X take away X1 over A is equal to T. And remember, T is just going to be a scalar parameter. If we equate these components, where well, we can say that y take away y1 is equal to t times b. And if we divide both sides by b, then it means y take away y1 over b is also equal to t. And finally, if we have z take away z1, what's that equal to? Tc. And if we divide both sides by c, then we will end up with z take away z1 over c equals t. From that, because each of these are going to be equal to t, then we can say they are equal to one another. So, the equations can be written in the form, this x take away x1 over a must be equal to, because they're all equal to t, they're equal to one another. So that's equal to y take away y1 over b, which is equal to z take away z1 over c. And you can see they're all equal to t. This here is known as expressing the equation of the line, line L, in symmetric form. So when you write it in symmetric form, x, y, and z are going to stay as x, y, and z. The values x1, y1, and z1 are just going to be from a random point on the line. So a point will be the x1, y1, z1. And the direction vector is going to be ai plus a bj plus ck. And that is where you get the a, the b, and the c. Let's try some examples. 
So example one, the line L passes through the point A with coordinates one, negative two, eight, and it's parallel to the vector three I plus five J plus 11 K. Part A, find the equation of the line, line L in symmetric form, and part B, show that this point B with coordinates negative two, negative seven, negative three also lies on L. So to start this off, first of all, we are given this point, point A, 1, negative 2, 8, and we also have the direction vector because we know it's parallel to this vector. If they're parallel, they're heading in the same direction. So the direction vector will be the 3i plus 5j plus 11k. To write the equation of the line in symmetric form, well, we know this here is your symmetric form. So the x, the y, and the z will stay as x, y, z. You can replace the x1, y1, z1 with the coordinates of the point that lies on the line. So the 1, the negative 2, and the 8. And the a, b, c just come from the direction vector. So we'd have the 3, 5, 11. So we can say x take away x1 over a will become x take away, well the point here is 1, so it's x take away 1 over and from the vector we'd have 3, so it's x take away 1 over 3. For y, well it would have y take away y1, so that's going to be y take away negative 2. So take away negative 2 becomes add 2, and we're dividing that by, well we divide that by 5. And z take away z1 over c will be z take away, well we're taking away 8, and we're going to divide that by 11. So that there the x take away 1 over 3, the y plus 2 over 5, and the z take away 8 over 11, with the equal signs between them, is the equation of the line in symmetric form. Part B, show that that point B, negative 2, negative 7, negative 3, also lies on line L. How do we go about doing that? Well, from our first answer, we know that x take away 1 over 3 is equal to y plus 2 over 5, which is equal to z take away 8 over 11. So, at that point, that point has to satisfy this equation in order to be on that line. So, we can replace the x with the negative 2. So we replace x with negative 2 because we know that is the x coordinate. We can replace the y with negative 7 and we can replace the z with negative 3. If we do that then we will get x take away 1 over 3 becoming negative 2 take away 1 over 3. And if we work that out, well negative 2 take away 1 is negative 3, divide that by 3 and we get negative 1. With z, with y rather, replace y with negative 7 so negative 7 plus 2 over 5 becomes negative 7 and 2, which is negative 5. Divide that by 5, and again you get negative 1. With z take away 8 over 11, we'll replace the z with negative 3. So it's negative 3 take away 8 over 11. Negative 3 take away 8, negative 11. Divide that by 11, and you get, brilliant, negative 1 again. So you can see that the coordinates of b satisfies that equation in symmetric form. We know that they are going to be equal. This worked out to be negative 1, this worked out to be negative 1, and this worked out to be negative 1. Because the coordinates of B satisfy the equation, well, it means that point B lies on line L. Woo! Example 2, find in symmetric form the equation of the line passing through the points A, with the coordinates 2, negative 1, 3, and B, with coordinates 3, 2, 5. So how do we find the equation of the line in symmetric form? Well, in symmetric form, we need to know a point. Woo! We have that. We've got two points. Yeah! And we also need to know the direction vector. Bum, bum, bum! We don't have the direction vector. But how could we find it, Matthew? What could we do? Brilliant. You can easily work out the vector AB because AB is going to be a vector that's in the direction of the line. So, doing that AB is going to be, Ian, brilliant, it's going to be B take away A. So, we're going to subtract the coordinates, so we'll have a 3 take away 2, we will have 2 take away negative 1, and we'll have 5 take away 3. If you work that out, then AB is going to be the vector 1, 3, 2. Woo! So, we know this Vector AB is going to be a vector that's in the direction of the line. So that will be our direction vector. So we now know a point. We know a couple of points. We've got this point A and we've got this point B. And we also know the vector that's in the direction of the line. So using one of the points, which one are we going to use? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Heather, which one do you want to use? 
A, brilliant. So using A, the equation of the line in symmetric form is, again, this is the equation of the line in symmetric form. So x, y, and z will stay as they are. Replace x1, y1, and z1 with the coordinates of the point. Let's use A. And the A, B, and the C come from the components of the vector. So it'll be the 1, the 3, and the 2. So we can say then that it will be x take away 2 divided by 1 will be equal to we'd have y take away negative 1, which becomes y plus 1, over 3. And that will be equal to z take away the 3 over 2. And that is the equation of the line in symmetric form. We could also, instead of a, we could have used point b. And what else could we have mixed up? Good, we could also have mixed up the vector. So rather than working out a, b, we could also have worked out b, a. Really, if you do that, it's still going to be the equation of that line. It doesn't matter which way you do it. So that there will be the equation of the line in symmetric form. Try some of the questions. The equation of the line in symmetric form. You're looking at the Unit 3 booklet, page 35. If you still need the booklet, send me an email. Ding! And I will reply with the booklet attached. Good luck. Have fun. Bye. Yeah.